Hello everyone, it's Deltlead, and today I'm going to be talking about how to build rovers in Simple Rockets 2. Now, a rover is any wheeled exploration probe that you can land on the surface of another celestial body and use it to explore, collect data, or run experiments. Rovers are a ton of fun because it adds an extra level of exploration to your mission. It doesn't just end when you land on the planet, there's other things you can do and places you can go, things to see, that you wouldn't be able to get to without a rover. Now, rovers in Simple Rockets 2 are a little tricky. The biggest challenge with rovers is the weight distribution. They're inherently asymmetrical and it's very difficult to load one onto a rocket without shifting the center of mass off of your center line. Another challenge with rovers is how to deploy them once you actually get them to the surface of a planet. In this video, I'll be talking about a couple of different ways you can go about designing rovers, packing them onto your rockets, and deploying them once you've reached your destination. Now, at its core, every rover needs a few things. A power source, usually in the form of batteries or solar panels, wheels to move it around the surface, and a chassis to hold everything together and give you space to add different components to your rover. Let's start with the chassis. A good basic chassis is 2 meters long, 1 meter wide, and a half a meter thick fuel tank. You can make this fuel tank the primary battery as well, which gives you plenty of power for your rover. I would also recommend squaring off the edges to give it a nice boxy look. Next, you'll want to add your wheels, and a thing to consider when designing your wheels is that on low gravity planets, rovers tend to slip and bounce around if you go any faster than 9 to 10 meters per second. So I'd recommend bringing the motor torque down to the very bottom, 100 on the slider, and then maxing the gear ratio out at 3. You can further reduce the speed of your rover by decreasing the diameter of your wheel and increasing its width. This gives us the most traction possible for our wheel, and it reduces the speed, which makes it much more controllable, especially on low gravity planets. Also, go ahead and max out your sideways and forward wheel traction. This is a space rover, not Tokyo Drift, so you really don't want your rover to be sliding and drifting over the surface of a planet. I would also recommend using some suspension for your wheels to let them handle uneven terrain better. The wheel part has an internal suspension setting that you can adjust to your likening, and if for whatever reason you don't think that's enough, you can add your own external suspension using the shock part. You can adjust the damper, spring strength, size, and thickness of the shock part to match your design, but like I said, the internal suspension on the wheels part should be enough for us to work with. The best way to attach our wheels to the rover is to use a strut part, then attach the strut to the side of the chassis. Attach the wheel to the other end of the strut part. Obviously this setup won't work in and of itself, so we'll have to do some repositioning. By using the rotate tool we can move the strut to a better angle and then adjust the wheel to be 90 degrees to the ground. So what we'll do is we'll rotate the strut 45 degrees down towards the ground, then rotate the wheel up the equivalent 45 degrees away from the ground so that the wheels still line up properly but lower to the ground than the chassis and the strut. This works a lot better than having the wheels above the chassis, which would cause some problems. Now an annoying issue with the wheel part in Simple Rockets 2 is making sure that the wheel is aligned correctly. If I give our wheel a turning angle while we're in the Part Properties tab, we'll see the wheel animate, showing us which direction it's rotating and in what direction the wheel will turn when we try to turn the rover. Now, without doing anything, you'll see that the wheel tries to turn vertically, which is not ideal when we're trying to control our rover on the ground. So let's go to the rotation tool, and with our wheel selected, let's set the z-axis of our wheel to zero. This makes sure that the turning axis is aligned to the ground properly, and it'll turn like a regular wheel on a car. Then we can go back to the properties tab and see that the wheel is in fact turning in the correct direction. Let's use mirror symmetry and copy our wheel to both sides of the rover. Then we can use the copy select function and group copy the wheel and strut assembly and drag it back to the back side of the rover and build the rear assembly of the wheels. We'll attach them to the side and then use the mirror symmetry again to copy them over to both sides. After a quick adjustment to fix the angle of our back wheels and line them up with the front ones, we're nearly done with our drivetrain of our rover. The last thing we need to do is to fix the turning angle on our back rover wheels. Now we can do one of two things. We could just set the turning angle to zero, which is how most cars work, with only the front wheels turning left to right, or we can have our wheels counter rotate by inverting the input to our back wheels. This way, when the front wheels turn right, the back wheels turn left, and the rover will turn much sharper. That's what we're going to do for this rover. Okay, our drivetrain is now finished, and the next thing we want is solar panels. 
Now there's about a million different ways that we could attach solar panels to this and there's probably no true right way to do it. So what I'm going to do is very simple. I'm going to add a single standard solar panel to the top of our rover and push it off to the right side. Then I'm going to use the mirror symmetry so that it sits on both sides of the rover. And that's really all the solar panel our rover is going to need. Now our wheels consume electric energy and if and when we add lights they will also consume electricity so if the solar panels aren't large enough to supply those demands then we won't be able to operate for extended periods of time. If we keep them small we can still operate our rover but it will either be at a reduced speed or with recharging periods between hours of operation. Our rover is now fully functional but certainly a little bare looking. What you do from this point forward will be primarily aesthetic adding rotors or hinges that could look like sensors or instruments, adding antennas or really whatever you'd like. Here I'm just fast forwarding through the changes to the cosmetics of my rover so you can get a rough idea of what I'm adding and why. And here we have it, the final product for our rover and I have to say it's pretty good looking. But before we try to launch it on a rocket we have to ensure that our rover actually works. Let's just launch the rover on its own and drive it around the test stand, see how it handles, and see if there are any other variables that need to be adjusted with the wheel settings, or the size, the weight, anything that could affect the performance of our rover. Alright, now we know the rover handles like a dream, all the controls are property oriented, and everything is good to go for this payload. Now we need to be able to deliver it to its actual destination. Let's try to land this rover on the moon and we'll deploy it from there. So what's the best way to get a rover on the ground safely? Well, there are roughly two schools of thought to this challenge. We can either sit the rover on top of our lander and then we just drive or lower the rover off the lander, or we could attach the rover to the bottom of the lander and just release it to the ground with a simple detacher. Now, that simple detacher from the bottom method is very effective, but it's pretty straightforward and self-explanatory and most people could figure it out without any help, so I'm not gonna cover it in this video. If you want to try it, go for it. You'll probably find, like I did, it's not a very challenging thing. Instead, I'm going to show you the more challenging but slightly more fun way of deploying the rover, lowering it from the top of your lander. I'll show you how to deploy the rover from the top of the lander just using rotators and pistons. Now here I have a pre-assembled launch vehicle that we'll be using for this mission, including the assembled lander, and I would normally explain the process of actually how I built and deployed the system, but because of all the moving parts involved here, it's a little bit of a hassle to build it quickly while I talk over this. So instead, what I'm just going to do is explain what I did earlier with my design process and how you can do it as well. It's a relatively straightforward design. We have a main rotor base here on the side of the top of the lander, and this rotates 180 degrees around. Currently it's pointing inwards towards the lander, but it will point exactly 90 degrees out from the lander when it's fully deployed. Now, this piston here extends the rover well past the lander, and another rotor here flips the rover over so that its wheels are pointed down towards the ground. And this last small piston here lowers the rover to the ground, not all the way, but enough to reduce the length of the drop significantly so that it doesn't break on impact. Now, the biggest thing that you absolutely have to monitor when putting your rover on a rocket is where the center of mass is. You want to align the rover's position on the lander so that its center of mass is already lined up with the lander's. This will make controlling your lander during final descent much easier. Since our rover is mirror symmetrical, all we need to do is adjust how far along this deployment boom we want to attach it. Now that we have our lander and rover set up how we want them, let's test it out on the launch pad. As you can see here, the rotator moves the rover out very slowly so as not to damage any of the components. Once the rover is clear, the second rotator flips it over, then the piston extends it to the ground and it finally releases it onto the surface. And just like that, we've successfully built and deployed a lunar rover. Now let's stack this thing onto the rest of our rocket and send it to the moon.
I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe to my channel. I'll be doing more videos like this one in the future covering the more in-depth topics of Simple Rockets 2. And if you want to, post in the comments below a link to a rover that you've built. I would love to see your designs and the creativity of this community. Now keep pushing the limits of what you can do and I will see you in the next video.